Hello, and welcome to the 84th edition of Beer Issues. My name is Matt Bruckert, and I'm coming to you from quarantine at Casa de Bruckert, where we're filming all the, the uh, beer issues until the quarantine time is over, and we can go back to going to breweries and fun stuff like that. So today we're going to be having a beer from Maryland, uh, Duclaw Brewing Company. We're having the Sweet Baby Java, which is like a, another one of the beers from the, they also make the Sweet Baby Jesus beer. Um, but this is a uh, espresso chocolate peanut butter porter, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pour it, give it a little bit of time to get set up here so we can enjoy it. Um, this beer is rated 88 out of 100, so it's rated as a very good beer. Let's get a little, uh, little head on there. Look at that beautiful head there. Um, it's an American uh, porter. It clocks in at 6.2% alcohol by volume. Um, and honestly, I've never had this. I've had the Sweet Baby Jesus before, but I've never had the Sweet Baby Java, so I'm kind of excited to try it. Because from, from my understanding, it's a very, very tasty beer. Um, I looked at the reviews, and a lot of the more recent reviews are actually even higher than the 88 out of 100. Uh, people really tend to like it, so I, I'm hoping that I'm one of those. Um, so we're going to go ahead and smell it. Oh, man. It's like a, a smell of a chocolate bar right from Hershey's. So you get that a really strong chocolate smell. Now... As you sniff it a little bit more, you start to get that coffee in there. And I do uh, smell that peanut butter. The peanut butter is lighter than I expected, which is probably pretty good because, you know, too much peanut butter in a beer, to me, it kind of uh, can spoil it. But it's, it's uh, kind of a tasty uh, addition to a porter. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about this beer. If I smell, as I smell it, it's, I'm even more excited about it. Mmm. Oh yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and dive into this. And then we'll talk about uh, porters, the history of porters. We'll talk about the difference between a porter and a stout. A lot of things we're going to touch on, but let's taste the beer first. Okay. Mm. Mm. So that's unique. Um, so you get the, the coffee flavor. And then you get the uh, chocolate and peanut butter in there. So it kind of balances itself out somehow, some way with the coffee not being overpowering uh, like you get in some some of the uh, um, coffee porters. But um, this is a good combination. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very good. If you want something different, this is a... Uh, I would say a different beer. I mean, if you like porters, uh, if you like a like a peanut butter porter, uh, this might be right up, right up your alley. But the one unique one about this one is, I taste quite a bit of hops in there, which is uh, the um, hops are not uh, normally real as prevalent in a um, porter. So it's kind of a unique blend of the coffee, the the peanut butter, chocolate. And then you get some hoppiness to it. So it's unique. I like it. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of the hop, so I, it doesn't uh, bother me in the slightest bit. But if you're not a hop fan, you might find it a little bit on the uh, more bitter. But I think it's, it's it's got a sweetness to it. But the bitterness you get from the hops. But there's also malts in there. When you're talking about a, a, a porter, you know, there's uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, the uh, malt. So... Let's talk about this uh, real quick. Let's talk about the history of uh, porters, okay? Because I don't taste porters. I don't know why I don't do it, but I don't usually uh, pull out a porter. Maybe because it's summer, you know, almost summertime. Maybe in the winter I'll pull out a few porters and we'll, we'll try some porters. Because I've always loved porters. It's just I don't drink them that often except for in the wintertime when they're a much more commonly drank beer. You know, in the, when it's warmer outside, drinking a porter isn't always as comfortable. So... The porter started in uh, London, England in the uh, early 18th century. So they've been around for quite a while. They're actually around, uh, I, I believe, uh, from what I, my understanding is, is they were around before stouts, okay? Uh, so both of them are, you know, dark black beer, you know. Uh, so what's the difference between a, a, port, uh, a porter and a stout? Well, if my understanding is um, stouts typically will use 
roasted barley. Okay, I think that's one of the distinguishing differences. Stouts use roasted barley. Now, there are some porters that actually use roasted barley uh, also. Some of the, uh, the uh, more, you know, stronger uh, types of uh, uh, porters uh, will use roasted barley. So it's not a, a one, you know, this is the distinct difference because there, there's some, a lot of similarities. But usually stouts are stronger in ABV also. So when you're talking about, you know, imperial stouts and stuff like that, they're, you know, they're stronger, they, they're boozier. And uh, as uh, porters, uh, th this is actually even high, I believe, for a porter at 6.2%. I think most of your porters are going to run, you know, around five. Um, so your stouts are usually going to be stronger and they're going to be using that roasted barley. So um, that kind of just tells you briefly the difference between a porter and a stout. I just wanted to make sure I put that out there because a lot of people have asked that. What's the difference between a porter and a stout? So I'm glad that I was able to share that with you. Um, uh, anyway, if you've enjoyed this, make sure you tell your friends. Make sure they tell their friends and their friends tell their friends. So everybody knows about beer issues. You can go online to get cool merchandise like this cool shirt, uh, beer issues shirt. Go to uh, shop.beerissues.com for excellent uh, uh, promotional products for beer issues. So you can you know uh, show your love for beer issues. And as my wife likes to say, I have beer issues. <laughs>